Hey gang, uh, we are live with Comics Workshop, fall 2020 season. I'm Merrick Bennett, merrickbennett.com. Um, you remember last week we were drawing this poster, we were working on this poster um, and we penciled it and inked it. Then we got out the colored pencils and we did the little characters and the crayons to do the, the forest. Took us a couple times, a couple sessions, but ultimately it's gonna show up in Freeman Col Colby volume three as one of the two page spread posters in there. It'll be grayscale and I'll use it as a color poster. So I wanted to show you today a little um, secret step that I always do when I'm digitally processing this poster. So we're gonna switch over to the image manipulation program I use, which is uh, called GIMP. It's basically a freeware Photoshop and I'll call it up here. And this is a great, powerful program. You can download it off the GIMP website and play around with it a little. And I actually scanned in that, um, that color poster, that crayon hand colored poster I showed you. And here's the scan. It's a full color scan. So if we zoom in on it, we're gonna see that it's made up of pixels, little square pixels. Each one has its own unique color value. There's sort of a brownish reddish one, right? And that's part of the edge of this tree. Now, one thing to notice now that this is all scanned in here, the crayon drawing is scanned into a digital file. If I zoom in on the black lines of the inked drawing, you notice something about that black ink. It's not really fully black, right? It's actually lots of grays and yellows and greens and blues. Remember as we crayon colored there, the, um, the crayon actually covered up our ink drawings. And you can sort of see that by eye. But when we scan that in, it really shows up. It's really quite noticeable. So this is an issue because if I'm trying to print this image and I want it to print clearly and crisply, those black ink lines are now all muddied up and lightened up by the crayon colors. There you can see it really strongly. The red crayon just lightened up and reddened up and oranged up that black ink, all right? So we need to solve that today. Um, and I have a little trick that we're gonna use to solve it. So let's open another file. I'm gonna go into open here. I'm going to open our first wilderness file that we ever scanned. And these are large files, but if you remember before we ever colored this poster, uh, we actually scanned it as a black and white image. So here it is as a black and white line art image. And let's zoom in on that same line, that, that really red and orange line at the branch of the tree. And you notice here, of course, there's no crayon. And of course, I boosted the contrast all the way. So every pixel is either black or white. And we said, remember, we said we do that because that prints really clearly. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to select all, and I'm going to use this black and white image over the color image to make the color image have a clear black line outline over it. So I'm going to select all, and I'm going to copy this image. Then we'll go back to that colored image there. GIMP has these nice tabs here so I can toggle between the two images that I have open. I'll go back to this colored, uh, the colored image, which is an RGB colored image. We're keeping it simple, just doing RGB here. Um, and I will paste that black and white drawing over it. Whoa, there it is. But Merrick, you're saying that's covering up the Colors, well, yes, it is. Look over here, let's make that its own layer. So over here on the layer tabs, I'm gonna click into here and we'll call that B and W layer. How about something descriptive? So now you can see the black and white layer is on top. If I drag it down, the color layer is now on top of that. So you don't see the black and white layer. So we need to come up with some way to see both of them. I'm gonna put the black and white layer on top of the colored layer. That means I have that colored scan and then laid over it is the black and white scan on this digital file. Now I'm gonna come up here and check the mode of that layer and that black and white layer, if I have that selected here, I can change the mode to be darken only. And that means only a pixel that is darker than the pixel it's on top of will show up. Anything lighter, the, dark, the darker pixel will just show through. So let's see what that looks like. Dark and only. Oh, there it is. That means all the white pixels 
just became transparent because nothing's lighter than the white pixels, right? This is additive, illuminated color. So nothing's lighter than the white pixels, nothing's darker than the black pixels, and we only have black and white on that layer. So now we, what we're seeing is the black pixels and we're seeing through the white pixels to see the color. If you'll see the difference, if we look just at this part of the picture and I close the eye, which makes the black and white layer invisible, and it's gone, we're back to just the color layer, right? And if I open the eye to make the black and white dark and only layer visible, we get the black lines back and nothing else. Just by way of contrast, if we set the mode to lighten only, I think we would get just the white pixels. Woo, that's an interesting look. Just the white pixels and showing through the black pixels would be all the inadequately colored, inadequately inked lines of the color layer. So we don't want that kind of weird and, and unexpected and rainbow dark looking. Let's go back to dark and only. There we go. All right, I'm gonna save this before I do anything else. We're gonna do a couple little changes to it, but I'm going to save it as, and we'll call it Homer Wilderness RGB. This is the second scan I made of that. And an XCF file is a layered file for the GIMP program. So we'll just say that. Okay, now it's saved. So what I wanna do next is go into the distance. I'll, sh I'll give you an example of this. All right, let's make that a little bigger there so you can see it. All right, I'm gonna go into the distance. Let's say we don't want heavy black lines on those soldiers moving through the distance. I can go around them. Let's just select all those lines there. I'm using the lasso tool now. And as I click through here, it selects the pixels. Now it may look like I'm selecting colored pixels, but remember which layer do we have selected over here on the layers tab? We are on the black and white layer. So in other words, let me, let me make that a normal mode so you can see the whole layer. In other words, now that I've selected these pixels, if I hit delete, it cuts them out of the black and white layer, right? And that effectively cuts the black lines out let me go back to, I'll select all. We'll go back and make this black and white layer dark and only, and you can see the effect. Now there is no heavy black pixel line on those distant soldiers moving through the woods. You see how that makes them look further away than the close up soldiers who have the black lines on them? All right, so we're gonna do that in a lot of this picture. For instance, the clouds of gun smoke. I don't think we want those to have heavy black lines on them. I think we actually want those clouds of gun smoke to, um, to have no lines on them. But the trees in the foreground here, I think we want heavy black lines. And then the trees way in the background, let's take those black lines off. So I'm gonna make sure I have the black and white layer selected. Let's start over here on the side of the picture. This tree in the foreground on the left right here, we're gonna leave with the black lines but these trees to either side in the distant background, we're gonna take off those lines. So let's use our lasso tool. And remember, we don't have to worry about the white pixels of our black and white layer because they don't show through anyways. They're transparent if it's set to darken only. You'll see once we do, oh, that's a branch, isn't it? So that we don't wanna select. That's a branch of the ivy. But we do wanna select these few soldiers. Let's see here. And I think that band, let's even take out this band of shadow that moves through the underbrush here, apart from the ivy. So we'll take that out. And I will double click to select all that and I'll hit delete or you can go up here to edit cut and that'll cut it out. Did you see that? Let me put it back, undo that. And when I hit cut, the black ink lines disappear from that part of the forest. I'll go back to select all. And if we zoom out, now you can see that tree on the left with the heavy black lines on it comes out and it's in front more because it's closer to us. It, it seems to be closer to us because it's higher contrast. And those trees in the distance don't actually have the heavy black lines. So they look like maybe they're obscured by gun smoke or a little mist or just a little farther away and a little 
um, lower contrast. Same thing has to happen for these branches here in the crux of the tree. Let's see. Once again, I'm looking to make sure my black and white layer only is selected. I don't want to cut the colored pixels out of the colored layer. That'll leave just a big white gap here. Okay. There we go. Let's hit delete, or I should show you the cut. That cut, let's undo that, and we'll redo it, cut, and that cuts those black lines out of that canopy there. Now we do have to decide at some point which part of the canopy is close enough to us to have those heavy black lines. For instance, if this foreground tree here is going to be have heavy black lines, maybe the canopy above it needs to have heavy black lines too. But at some point, we're going to cut those out. Let's see. Let's cut all these black lines out of the distance in the canopy. I think that's actually a branch coming off that tree. Cut all these out. Maybe we'll just come right around here. You know, if I'm unsure, what I should probably do is make sure I keep a black and white layer with everything still on it so I can always go back to it. I will paste a black and white layer in. I can make it invisible and leave it there. Then I can always get parts back if I decide I cut out too much. Now, what did we say? I'm going to have to cut carefully around these soldiers because these foreground soldiers, Freeman Colby and Jonas Bacon and company, they will have black outlines around them, but this gun smoke will not. So that we're gonna take all the black ink work out of. I think that'll make it really striking. That'll really draw your eye to them. So let's just try, we'll confine ourselves just to this black ink cloud here, and we'll decide about these sticks afterwards. All these sticks and branches on the ground that fell as the, they said, as they sat under the pines, the uh, bullets and the cannonballs and things would come flying through the branches over them and shower them with pitch and pine needles. All right, I've selected that whole area. I'll hit cut. And oof, there it goes. Let's step back for a sec and look at that effect. Oh, I really like that. My eye really sees those trees. That brings those trees up into the foreground. Let's put another full black layer on just so we can, full black and white layer on there, just so we can, um, just so we can compare and contrast. I'm going to select all. Um, and I will copy. Can we select all? Yep. Copy. I'll come back to the color version. And I will paste. I use keyboard shortcuts, but there we go. We'll call that black and white layer full. There it is. And remember, we have to make it dark and only. Okay. So here is our full black and white layer. And if you look, there's a lot of black ink in there. Even the distant trees are drawn in black ink. Everything seems to be like all on the same level, the same level of intensity and contrast. But let's switch that up with just the black and white layer where we cut out the distant black pixels. And that'll look like this. Ah, that draws your eye to those foreground characters and it helps the background sort of fade a little bit. Um, and you can play with this too. You could also, I suppose, one could put the full black, black and white background layer in but then play with its opacity. Right here, we have a control of opacity, which is how see-through the visible pixels are. So I could make it, like I could drag the opacity down here to say 50%, and those black pixels would become 50% visible. You see that little bit of a difference? If I bring it down even further, they get lighter. If I bring it up, they get darker. So you can play with that too. You can carve up different, parts of this black and white layer. I'm just going to make that invisible. I'm going to keep it simple here. 
You can carve up different parts and play with the opacity and get different levels of black line on there. But the key thing though, is to use that black and white layer so that when you look at the foreground objects, well, let's look at our characters here. When you look at their faces, you also get that cartoony outline, right? And you may have to monkey around with that a little bit. I might come in here and move it down slightly so it lines up a bit. I didn't do that to begin with, but I definitely want it lining up all across the picture. All right, while we're here, let's just finish with these trees in the distance. Then I'm gonna play around a little bit with these foreground sticks. Actually, you know, I think I'll take them out. It does look pretty clear to me that I want them out so that my characters stand out. Then I'll leave the, the bushes dark right around their feet. Wherever they're sort of touching, I want that to have sort of a, almost a magical visibility to it. And then I'll have to decide exactly where in this tree. Oh, now I have to decide which lines disappear and which don't. Let's try this. If that doesn't look too... Oh, I can't decide. Oh, I'm gonna escape out of that and I'll just do these sticks here. Sometimes it takes some trial and error. I can't decide which part of those bushes should be invisible, should be lighter, you know, lower contrast, and which should be the high contrast with the black lines. It's not something I wanna necessarily commit to live. I'll, I'll try out a couple versions maybe let it sit overnight and look at it tomorrow and see which version I like better. So we'll delete those lines and step back and see. Oh, actually, I really like that look. I'll undo that, put them back in. See how those, um, those darks, the black ink sticks along the ground there really pop and stand out. If I delete the black ink pixels off the black and white layer, then they don't pop out as much. They kind of uh, meld into the forest floor, which I kind of like. I'm gonna keep the black ink on these foreground bushes because that makes them nice and dark and high contrast. And now we're just gonna go into these distant trees, and take the black ink out from under that canopy. I think I'll leave the black ink pixels in the canopy because that canopy kind of connects to our foreground tree, which definitely has the black ink. Let's see here. I'm gonna leave all those bushes in the foreground for now. I might take some out later. Freeman Colby's rifle barrel stays in. Jonas Bacon's barrel stays in. We'll go up here and take all these branches and sticks out. It's a slow moving sport watching people process these digital files, but it's rewarding because you get a cool image at the end, ready? We're gonna cut that out with a hit of the delete button. And then we'll step back. Oh, that having, taking the black pixels in the distance out on both sides of that tree really brings that tree out. And I like the gun smoke without the heavy black lines. That gives our picture, remember we started, if I make this black and white layer, our partial black and white layer um, invisible, we started from here no black pixels at all, right? Everything's colored, but the the you don't you lack the definition and the clarity of the black ink. Then we added in a full layer of black and white, only set to dark and only, right? And that gives everything kind of a flat clarity. And then we cut out some of the black pixels and left it only around the foreground, and that gives us at least two le levels. Um, I started doing this with figures in rooms with walls behind them, and that's pretty easy to do. Then you have a figure and you have a wall behind them. There's only really two layers there. Here it's a little trickier. Like I'll have to finesse maybe some of these branches might have a slightly lower um, opacity black line layer in there just to give it a little bit more of a sense of gradation rather than foreground background because this is a really deep image. But anyways, let's save it as that. So I'll hit save. And then I'm also going to export as a TIFF file. And this is such a large file because it's RGB color. I'm gonna call it TIFF plus LZW. 
and that TIFF file, I will actually have LZW compression. Now I write plus LZW on the file name because you don't want to try to print with LZW compression. That You can run into issues when you try to print. All right, it's taken a while to save. And then I'll also save a smaller JPEG version so I can pull it out and look at it. Let's actually try saving a JPEG at this full size. This is a 10,200 pixel wide image. So it's a good size image. I scan all my images at 600 dots per inch because I can always make them smaller, but you can't make them bigger once they're scanned. Oh, maybe you can't see that dialog box. Sorry, I'm when I when I say uh, to save something, it shows a dialog box, and I choose the file format, and then I hit save. Now that I look on my uh, screen here, maybe you can't see that. So, but you can see the original. The thing to remember with these files, anytime you scan um, uh, into RGB, is that the way the color looks on the original drawing, the hand colored poster, is one way. That's reflective light. The way the scanner sees that is another thing. The way the, the computer represents that on the screen, which is illuminated light, uh, that's another thing. And we process it from there. And then the way the printer, if we send it to a printer, the way the printer actually prints that is a whole other thing. So um, the only real way to see how this is going to come out is to play around with it a little bit here, send it to a printer you know, ask them to print it, and maybe go in and and work with them to get the color balances right, um, depending on how you're printing it. But that gives you a little view of what it's like to do that, um, to add that black line layer in there. It's much more clear, much more visible than the original scan where those black ink lines are covered up by crayon. In my case, that's partly because my crayons are so, crayon is inherently messy. It's just smearing wax across the paper, right? So this gives us an artificial black ink outline around part of the image. Great, so I'm gonna use this one. Um, this will eventually, oh, let's make a grayscale while we're here. So let's see, I'm gonna take this, I'll select the RGB layer. This is the last thing we'll do. I, I forgot I wanted to do this too. I will select all and I'll copy that. And now I'm gonna take it into, I'll paste from new, so I'll just, paste into a new image there. See, it's got a new tab up here. And I'm going to convert the mode to grayscale. And that will just wipe out all the colors and turn it into a grayscale image. Um, and I think what I'll do is I'll also go into the colors and play with the brightness contrast a little bit. Maybe a little lower contrast, maybe a little brighter. Oh, that's going to get pretty gray, maybe a higher contrast to bring out some of the dark lines. Get it so it looks about right or as clear as possible. If I undo that, we can see that's pretty dark, so I'll redo that. Okay, then I'm going to select all, select all and copy, and I'll go back into our layered file, and I'm going to paste that grayscale copy in here. Now I'm going to call it gray, whoops, I'll title it gray, and I'll drag this down so it's just over the colored layer, and normally I'll make it invisible so we can see the colored version again. But then if I want a grayscale version with those heavy black lines on there, I just visibilize that gray layer. And this gives us, initially our grayscale layer would look like this without any black lines, right? But all that work we did to set up our black and white layer with the selective black lined areas, that can lay over the grayscale. And now I will export as, and we'll call this gray, and we'll just do a JPEG to see how it looks. So now I'm hitting export and now it is exporting. Okay. I don't know if you can see that dialog box or not. And then um, I'll remember, of course, to save the layered file. This is still an RGB image. If I make the gray invisible, you see the colors again. 
So I'll leave that gray layer right in there and I'll hit save. And now my layered file, I can go back to my layered file, play around with the black and white layers, um, play around with the opacities and export a new grayscale or a new RGB color version as I need um, to make a poster to go into the book. Because when I put it in the book, remember all those fine colors will actually get compressed into gray. So it's much better. Here's a, I'm holding up the book here. You'll see these two page spreads in, in all the Freeman Colby books. So it's much better to actually control those gray layers, uh, those gray scales in the program and get the contrast just right uh, before I put it into the book and find out how it prints. Um, all right, so any questions? let me know. I hope this is helpful. Um, I hope it's good to see how these little tricks about how these files come together and why they look clear on the page. Because if you don't do some of these tricks and you put it into a book or into a mini comic, it might not come out all that clear. Um, so I'll post the uh, final scans and the final versions to the Patreon. Thank you. Thank you, patrons, for making all this possible. I'm going to do a lot of uh, just public demos and stuff as I work on things this fall. Um, and the full set of demos and stuff will be over on the Patreon and the printables and the final versions of the artwork. So thanks for supporting. Thanks for stopping in, folks. And um, I'll see you again soon. We have lots more that's in progress here. Lots more to do. Have a great day, everybody. And keep drawing. Good luck with your comics.